All right, let's talk about offer sheets. This is a conversation that comes up basically once a year because every off season with the amount of young talent that there is in the NHL today, you have at least a handful of big name RFAs. And this year is certainly no different. In fact, it's one of the more loaded RFA classes in recent memory. You have the likes of Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes, Kale McCarr, Miro Haskinen, Brady Kachuk, Kirill Kaprizov, and I could keep going too, but those are just some of the top guys. So with all of that talent in need of new contracts, is this the off season we will finally see not just an offer sheet attempt but a successful offer sheet and the reason that I say a successful offer sheet is because we did see an offer sheet attempt back on July 1st of 2019 when Mark Bergevin and the Montreal Canadiens tried to pry Sebastian Ajo out of Carolina they signed him to a five-year 42.27 million dollar offer sheet an AAV of a little under eight and a half million and it was definitely cool to just see an offer sheet attempted especially to a player the caliber of Sebastian Ajo but let's be real there was no chance that Don would Dell and Carolina were not going to match that. It would have taken a lot more than that for that offer sheet attempt to actually be successful, probably north of a $10 million AAV. So why is it so rare to see an offer sheet in the National Hockey League, especially compared to other major professional sports leagues like the NBA? You see offer sheets signed and successful all the time, usually a couple times every offseason. Some very recent ones I can think of, Malcolm Brogdon signing with Indiana, Bogdanovich signing with the Atlanta Hawks, and those are just off the top of my head. If I sat here and thought I could probably name a lot more. So the first reason as to why offer sheets are so rare in the NHL is there's a lot of risk involved. You don't just sign the player if he accepts it and the team doesn't match, you get the player. You have to give something up, especially if it's a big offer sheet. Like if you're offer sheeting a player like Elias Pettersson or Kale McCarr, which would probably have to be above like 10 and a half, close to 11 million if you actually want it to be successful. And offer sheets above, I believe it's 10.2 million now, you have to give up four first round picks as compensation. So that is definitely a time but that's just for the really lucrative offer sheets. Like for an example, from 6.166 million to 8.221 million, and that's talking about AAV, not the entire value of the contract, but from those dollar amounts, you'd have to go up a first round pick, a second round pick, and a third round pick. And just as an example, I'll use Igor Shosturkin, goaltender for the New York Rangers here. He is an RFA this off season. Would it be a bad idea for a team out there, maybe that has had trouble solidifying their goaltending situation for a long time, to go out and give an offer sheet to Shesterkin for like five years, an AAV of like seven and a half to eight million. Something that would be pretty difficult for the Rangers to match, especially if they want to bring back both Shesterkin and a guy like Pavel Buchnevich, who's also an RFA this offseason. If that happened and the offer sheet was successful, the Rangers didn't match, the team that signed him to that offer sheet would only have to give up a first, a second, and a third. I don't think that's a ridiculous amount to give up to get a young starting goaltender who's likely going to be one of the best goaltenders in the league for a very long time. Now, Granted, goaltending in the NHL is extremely random, and I've often said on the channel I'm not a fan of signing goaltenders to massive contracts, but I'm pretty confident Shishterkin is going to have a great career. Another quick example I'll give is Andrei Svechnikov, who's an RFA this offseason, winger for the Carolina Hurricanes. What if a team offered him five years, $10 million AAV, which would probably be an overpayment, and in that tier, you'd also have to give up two first-round picks, one second, and one third, but there's no guarantee with those draft picks you will draft somebody that's going to be good or even close to as good as Andrei Svechnikov or be as valuable as Andrei Svechnikov is. So you guys see what I'm getting at here and these are just random examples like I don't think either of those things I just said are going to happen and I did kind of simplify it a little bit it's definitely not that easy there are some other things that come into play first the player actually has to sign the offer sheet he has to want to come to your team but money definitely talks so I can't imagine a player wanting to go to a certain team would come into play all that often when it came to offer sheets and another thing for a team wanting to sign a player to an offer sheet you need to have the draft picks for compensation and they have to be your own draft picks as well like say you need to give up a 2021 first round pick that first round pick has to be your pick it can't be a pick that you traded for from another team so anyways all of what i just said that's the first reason as to why offer sheets are basically non-existent in the nhl the compensation is definitely a lot it's a lot to risk now the other reason and this honestly i think comes into play more than you would think gms are scared to burn bridges with other gms they're 
scared to ruin relationships. In fact, I'll talk about this quickly because it's hilarious and it's an example of a successful offer sheet. The player actually changing teams happened on July 26th of 2007. The Edmonton Oilers signed Ducks forward Dustin Penner to a five-year $21.5 million offer sheet and the Anaheim Ducks did not match. So Dustin Penner did in fact change teams. He went to the Oilers and the Anaheim Ducks general manager at the time was Brian Burke and he's told this story multiple times and it's hilarious every time I hear it but him and Oilers GM Kevin Lowe were actually going to meet up and fight over this like fist fight. I'm pretty sure they have made up since then but that just kind of gives you an idea of how offer sheets definitely can ruin relationships and even when Sebastian Ajo signed the offer sheet with the Canadians back in 2019 Don Waddell said he doesn't know if they'll use all seven days to match the offer sheet. Signing right away allows the other team to sign more players and he smirked when he said this maybe I don't want to help them out right now. So I really do think that plays a big part in why we don't see offer sheets in the NHL. I won't say it's GMs being cowards, but again, it's just them not wanting to burn bridges. Like say if you somehow pry one of Quinn Hughes or Elias Pettersson out of Vancouver, I'm sure Jim Benning would never want to do business with you again. But I don't know, man, like the whole goal of being a general manager is to build a championship contender. And I really do think offer sheets aren't used enough. I mean, they're not really used at all, especially for small market teams that have trouble bringing in, you know, big name players, whether it's through unrestricted free agency or trade. Columbus, for an example, I think Yarmo Kekalainen should be firing away offer sheets this offseason to all the big name RFAs. I don't know if there's any rules for how many offer sheets you can put out there in a single offseason or anything like that, but I think he should at least try. Now, again, like I said earlier in the video, there is definitely no guarantee a player would even want to sign the offer sheet to potentially go to Columbus, but money talks and it's just worth a try in my opinion. So are we going to see an offer sheet attempt or a successful offer sheet this offseason with all the big name RFAs out there? If I had to put money on one or the other, I would say probably not. It's really unfortunate, but I mean, it's for all the reasons that I talked about in this video as to why I don't think we're going to see one. And I mean, the flat cap comes into play as well, because you would have to overpay for somebody to actually have the offer sheet be successful. And there's not a lot of teams out there right now that have a ton of cap space who would also be willing to give up draft picks as compensation. Like Detroit, as an example, they have a lot of cap space, but Steve Osmond isn't going to go out and offer sheet a Pedersen or a Kale McCarr and have to give up like four first round picks, which could potentially be Shane Wright and Connor. Bedard. Something I actually just thought of, imagine if Seattle swooped in and gave some crazy offer sheet to a guy like Makar, Pedersen, Svechnikov, Hughes. Now that's definitely something I could get behind. It's not going to happen, but I mean, I can dream, right? That's going to do it for today's video though. Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comment section, your predictions. Do you think maybe we'll see an offer sheet this off season? And if so, what player do you think could be a potential target? And what team do you think is in a good position to actually go out and attempt to offer sheet somebody? Could you imagine an off season with the expansion? expansion draft and then like usual free agency and the entry draft, but then also like a Jack Eichel trade and a huge offer sheet. The things I would do for that to happen.